Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry, from the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, Crazy Women Country friends. This is Donna. I'm Paula, and today we have Eve Horn with us from Peak Music UK. Oh my God, yes, hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. No problem. How are you doing? Did I freeze? I don't know. How are you doing? <laughs> Not be me. What? How are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we start recording, it all just goes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, what you say? It's a good outtake. You know what? It's actually a thing, you know. It's called like um, red light syndrome or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. It's a thing, you know. So when you're in the studio and they press record, you completely mess it up every time. So that's why, as, as an engineer's rule or something, you know, you'll you'll say, okay, we're just gonna do a quick take, like just practice, and you act, you quietly record. Ah. Get, their, get their best stuff, yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. the secret. Yeah. That's the secret. Mm-hmm. We need to hide it then, so it doesn't show up on our screen. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on mine, because I'm like watching for the record. Where is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of this stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You know. So if I go, <laughs> I'm really bad at doing it. I try and do it all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, so I love that. Yeah. Let's start doing that. We'll start making funny shapes, and that'd be it. Yeah. Um, Okay, so get back to the interview. So tell us, who is Eve Horn and what is Peak Music UK all about? So, do you want me to go back to the beginning or? Yeah, when were you born, you know? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what so time of day? <laughs> <laughs> what so, day? Um, I, um, I live in South East London, um, born and raised um, and very proud to live in South East London, actually. Um, I went to the Brit School when I was 13. Um, so it's like a performing arts school in the, in the UK. And it first opened in, I think, 91. I was one of the first lot of students in um, because I was at a Catholic school prior to that and, and I wanted to really do kind of creative things. Um, so I went there and it was amazing and I didn't even end up finishing because basically you could go and do your GCSEs and then go straight into a level. Um, and I, I did a year of that and then got signed to my first record label, uh, which was Polydor. And, um, I was in a a girl group that was like a funk rock R and B girl group. So it was great. We had a live band and, you know, I'd end up on the floor. It was wicked. Um, really good for live stuff. Um, and then, I ended up signing to EMI in Denmark and I moved to Denmark uh, and joined a girl group over there. Um, and between the two, I toured with the Backstreet Boys, Boyzone, uh, Peter Andre, Damage. Uh, we performed at Wembley. We uh, worked with Jermaine Dupree, who's responsible for huge artists like Mariah Carey. Um, we toured in Japan and a- all over Asia and Europe. Um, yeah, it was a fantastic time. We, we did a lot of touring, a lot of performing, and it was, it was amazing. Um, but then unfortunately the group split up and I came back to the UK and I got depressed. Mm. I suffered from depression massively. And it was a time when depression wasn't really a thing. It was like around the year 2000. Um, it's something I'm very open about. Uh, And I think more people should be. I never used to be. I used to really have a massive problem with like taking pills and, you know, thinking I didn't need it. I had this really, you know, internal fight with having to be on something. Um, But I, you know, I am, I've made my peace with it. um, And I got through it. Um, at At the same time I was going through that, you know, I, cause I mean, you know, you, you kind of like, you go from having limos and, 
and stuff like that and everything being paid for you to and being on like huge television shows to to getting on a bus mm. it's it's a real calm down isn't it huge and bearing in mind that i i didn't i went straight into the industry um so one of the things i i'm really passionate about is mental health when i came back i, I did speak to the brit school very briefly about having something in, like working with them to get something in place um for people to support them on the way down or that that you know have wanted to make it in the career and didn't quite get there or whatever whatever it is but just giving them some support on the other side um so i'm hugely passionate about mental health um and so yeah from there i i went on and um i got ill so i had severe endometriosis uh another thing that wasn't really talked about at the time um and that led to having hysterectomy and bowel surgery two other things i'm very open to talk about because we don't talk about these things enough everyone's kind of like, oh, can't talk about that can't talk about <laughs> hysterectomies you know yeah and i'm like talk about it we're going through it it's tough it's hard it hurts yeah. you know it's horrible don't you don't have to go through it alone you know um but while I went through that transition and my depression and all of that, it was like a seven year period. Um, I went to university to study sound engineering. I was still, even though I was going through all of this, I was still trying my hardest to kind of do my thing, set up a recording studio after we graduated with um, another girl that I was at uni with. Um, and it was around the time where I, I wanted to start promoting, you know, women. I, I, I saw there was like, a massive gap um, changing over from being an artist to the technical side of things. Um, so we started a recording studio to promote female producers with the Prince's Trust. Um, we won a couple of awards. We won a national business award and an Enterprise in London award for the work we did with the communities and young women. And um, then, you know, I'm still battling my depression and, and, and then getting ill and stuff. And, I think after we run the studio, because we did everything ourselves and it was really exhausting, we decided to go and work for Apple, both of us, because we used to bring our computer there all the time to get it fixed. And we ended up working at the same Apple store. I ended up becoming an expert and she became a genius and then now manages the store that we both started in which is great. Um, and I, after that, went on to become a train driver because I was like, if I can't do music and if I can't be creative, I might as well make money. And, you know, I had this really massive love-hate thing with music. I, the, the music industry transitioned from being the traditional signing to a record label, sending a tape into an A&R guy to online, having to do everything yourself as an artist and I could, I was in this weird space of being lost I was bitter I was I couldn't understand it I didn't want to conform and change and grow with it I, I was like angry with it all and so I went on a massive journey yeah became a train driver for six years <laughs> um, and it wasn't until I was like my soul's dying um, and I literally, while I was being a train driver, I felt like a, a circle trying to fit into a square. I did everything I could to make it work for me. I became a trainer and an assessor, you know, because I, you know, I've pretty much done that in every role I've been in. I've always ended up training or mentoring or, yeah. and I was like, I've got to, I've got to go back into music. I can't like, I, I, I'm, I just need to. And that's why I just, one day I had enough and I left the money which was holding me like hostage. Yeah. How can I earn this much money? And, and I, I walked away and I started Peak Music. And I re-found all my passion from what I had before. I found myself again. I, I told myself two things. Stay open to opportunities, even if it's something you, you, you don't know or you're not used to or it's not your normal people or whatever, stay open to it, you know, welcome it. And the other thing was to have fun um, because I'd forgotten what that was like. And 
I started the Peak Music by doing music production courses for female songwriters to give them the tools that they need um, to not have to constantly rely on producers, not have to spend money, to understand the language that producers use so they have more confidence mm -hmm. um, going into studios and also give them the tools to start producing you know, themselves so that they can at least get their ideas down uh, and get it to a state where they can effectively um, give that to a producer to make it um, go further. So that was my, my first thing that I started doing. And the second thing was to run songwriting retreats in the mountains in Italy. Um, a friend of mine owns a beautiful house out there in the mountains with a stu recording studio. Um, so my aim was to be able to get songwriters together and record during the retreat um, and then, you know, be able to pitch their songs to publishers as well. Unfortunately, COVID happened. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally, I just started the business. All of this was planned, ready to go. I had everything set. Um, yeah. I'd gone back into performing with my old girl group. So I'd performed on stage in front of 16,000 people for the first time in 18 years. Um, wow. Which, oh, that's awesome. yeah, yeah, so that was after I decided to go back into music. It all happened by accident. And then our old producer got in touch. Then we ended up writing a few more singles um, and releasing them again. Uh, yeah, and being on stage after 18 years of not... I stopped singing everything. Um, it was just amazing. It was... It's, it's where I belong, you know, performing is, mm -hmm. is one of the places I feel at home. Um, and I think I learned just by being open and allowing myself to accept that my journey was supposed to be that journey. Mm -hmm. I had to go through it to allow myself to be here again. Um, and it's absolutely okay. You know, we, of, we often say to ourselves, yeah, but you know, what if I'd have done this then? And it's like, you wasn't supposed to do it then. Mm -hmm. There's a reason you didn't do it then. And, and if you believe in that and you uh, trust it, you know, then, then you can be open to opportunity. Um, so now my aim is, you know, the campaign. Um, I'm, I've got a, a class on Skillshare that nearly has a, a thousand students, which I did just before Christmas. And it's a creative songwriting class. So it's for beginners. Um, who maybe have never written songs before and who want to, and it goes through all sorts of things and how to overcome writer's block and, you know, um, structures of songs and the anatomy of songs and just breaks down all of the things that you'd like to know if, you, if it's something you want to get into. And I'm just about to start another thing which I think is vital. Um, it's going to be songwriting for, I guess, mums or people who feel they lost themselves at one point. I, I know a lot of corporate people uh, have this because I've had some recent conversations with a lot of business women and they feel like they've lost touch with, with the, the human side. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's being in a male dominated industry, whatever that industry might be, but they just have lost the, the child within the passions that they used to have. Mm -hmm. So my aim is to work with these women whether they've had kids and lost touch with themselves or you know to put themselves first again find yeah. the goals that they use and the dreams they used to have um regain their confidence and realign with their goals and dreams and i aim to do that through songwriting which is yeah um you know a lot of People view songwriting as, you know, yeah, I want to write for people and I want to do this. I don't want this thing that I'm doing to be songwriting to be a star or to have a career. This is for your soul, you know, to, to, to regain your conf confidence, to rewire your brain, to get back the person that you were. Um, mm. Yeah, and, and my, my, I guess that my passion comes from like LGBTQ plus, I'm super passionate about that. You know, um, I have a partner and we have a little girl together. Um, so being in a same sex relationship uh, is, is important. 
being mixed race woman, um, yeah, being from a council estate, you know, I identify with a lot of it. So I can, I feel confident in being able to help other people having gone through a lot of stuff in my life uh, and overcome it. So yeah, I could keep going. <laughs> Literally, I, could, I literally could keep going. All the stuff you have done, and, and just yeah, I could yeah. I could keep going. It's like someone stop her, shut her up. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's all good. I think it's good though for other people to hear that you know they're not the only ones who've been through tough times. You know, yeah. um, I think sometimes we think. You know, we've probably all done it ourselves. You're sitting there thinking, well, why is this happening to me? Why am I the only one that's going, going through this personal hell when really there's probably loads of other people going through it? But as you said, we don't talk about it. Yeah, and this is what I mean. Um, I, I had a Facebook I still have a Facebook group, but I'm, I'm going to be trying to bring it onto Clubhouse or do Instagram Lives with it. It's called Women in Conversation. And it is literally talking about all of the things that people don't really want to talk about that are really kind of awkward and people love to brush under the carpet. It's like, no, let's have a chat. Let's mm -hmm. create a safe space. Let's have a conversation. Like I was in a, in a room the other day and I'm going for my menopause at the moment as well. Um, I'm like six years in and we were talking about, um, I was having like a really like wobbly week and I get these moments where I just have a couple of days of sobbing. I don't know why I'm crying. Mm -hmm. I get this feeling inside me that feels like overwhelm and I don't know, like nothing in my life has changed. Nothing has changed, but I get it for a few days and I'm, I'm like, I just want to smash everything up and I don't know why. And then, you know, and then it goes like out of nowhere. Estrogen. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I literally was in a room with someone the other day and they, they were saying the same thing. And I was like, Oh my God, like, mm -hmm. I, you've got exactly the same things you're, you're saying the same things you feel the same and it's just really refreshing to know especially going through your menopause I mean having PMS and things like that anyway is enough but I think going through your menopause and and not realizing how many side effects are related to it in in ways that you wouldn't even imagine yeah. Like I was like, why am I struggling to send emails? Why is it taking me so long? And a menopause um, lady that was, was in the conversation was like, did you know that that's a side effect? And I was like, no. And the light bulb. And I was like, of course. This is why my mum always used to go on about like feeling like she's losing her mind all the time. You know, and it's just a nice um, reminder that we're not losing our minds. Yeah, no, you're not losing your mind. Yeah. I promise I'll tell you if you're losing your mind. I... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you're right. That, that's that's great because, you know, no one wants to have those hard conversations. And and I'm the firm believer, like, I'm the first one at work to, like, bring up stuff or certain places and then be like, I'll I'll start the hard conversation. I'll start it. Let's yeah. go. Let's, let's talk about it. I mean, what's it going to hurt? Exactly. You know, we, we want to have it. Yeah. So, hmm. Here, here. Yes. <laughs> I think also it's where you're brought up. I mean, obviously from the UK, you're taught oh. step off a little. You oh, keep yeah. everything in, you keep working, you keep plodding through. Obviously, not every country is the same. You know, other countries a lot more. You know, can be a lot more open. But you know, we're brought up that way. You don't cry. You're tough. You keep going. You know, men don't cry. You know what I mean? You just keep going, no matter how much you're falling apart. Mm. And, and that, that goes back um, to the society thing we were talking about, you know, when we were saying about, is it men or is it society? You know, men are told they can't really have emotion. How bad? That's awful for a guy to, to, mm. to grow up, you know, poor, like guys <laughs> cry <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah, I, you know, I respect men that cry. Yeah. Like I it really doesn't make them soft, does it? No, not at all. It's a myth. Mm. Yes. Cry your eyes out. It's society. It's society. It's society. <laughs> it's a unicorn. Yeah. Yes. It's, 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 <laughs> it's expectations on people, isn't it? And, you know, it's what, it's what we expect. And that, that chain of thought needs to change. We need to sort of start treating people like human beings. We're, you know, we're all the same. And that was you'll have a coming off my tongue. 
I was like, we need, <laughs> we need to learn to be human again. Mm-hmm. We do. Yeah, you're, you're and not the robots that we've been programmed to be because of, you know, yeah. changing Conditioning. stuff. So, yeah, we need to start yeah. being human. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. See? <laughs> we need to change it. We do. So there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Do you want to tell me uh, now, obviously in your different roles here that you've had, who are, are there any female producers that um, you were like, wow, that's so awesome that that, that person's, you know, you look up to them as like a a Shiro or. 100% Missy Elliott. Nice. Nice. Missy Elliott. um, There's um, an engineer called Miss Largo who um, works with, Timberland, she did a lot of stuff on his album. Um, another great, great engineer. Um, but yeah, growing up, she Missy Elliott, I think, was the first woman that I saw as a as a commercial producer. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's just mental and great and amazing in, in so many different ways. In terms of her creativity, it's insane. Um, mm. So yeah, huge inspiration across everything as an artist, as a as a creative. Like her mind is great. She can rap. She can sing. She can produce. She can do everything. Um, so yeah, Missy Elliott. Awesome. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna have a bit of fun now. Oh, okay. I love. We got fun. quick fire questions. <laughs> we got some quick fire questions. So. People can get to know you as a human being. Okay? Yes. You as a person. Yeah. The things that you like, don't like. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, early bird or night owl? Oh, night owl. <laughs> Beach or countryside? Oh, man. You can't say both. <laughs> you can if you want to. Yeah, it's got to be a bit of both because, yeah. yeah. I love nature and I love the beach. <laughs> Both. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. Favourite season? This is meant to be quick fire, isn't it? I would say... Oh, okay. God, this is tough. Spring? The reason is... Okay, cool. Summer is too hot and I don't like... I don't like sun if I have to wear clothes in it, which is why I like the beach. <laughs> so if, if there's sun, yeah. I, I need to be like in a bikini in it. And normally if it's summer over here, I'm working and I don't like it. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's got to be spring. Spring brings hope. Perfect. I like that. Um, your biggest fear? Uh... My biggest fear, I I guess, is being judged wrongly. Yeah, I can't, like, it, it, I hate it. Yeah. Favourite holiday? Oh, Cambodia. (gasps) Wow. Yeah, Angkor Wat. Um, It's like (laughs) Machu Picchu and and Angle, and then, I don't know, because I did Thailand on my, no, yeah, it was Cambodia, because we did Cambodia and Thailand, yeah, Cambodia. Um, favorite drink? Uh, red wine. <laughs> I like that. I was wondering if it was red, if it was red wine or black currant or something. Oh no, no, it's <laughs> definitely red wine. It's like coffee gets me through the first half of the day, and then red wine, and then repeat. Nice. <laughs> Literally, it's a great cycle. But yeah, what kind of red wine is? Is there any kind in particular, like a Merlot, or or is it just all red wine? Um, I like uh, Chilean, mm-hmm. Chilean wine, um, Californian, Argentinian. Um, so uh, the softer kind of reds. Um, I do love Merlot or Shiraz. Um, I think Rioja for me depends. I can't drink too much of it because it's quite heavy. And Malbec is nice if you're having a, a one glass of it. Yes. But it just, other than that, I start feeling a bit, oh you know so yeah the, the, the soft light wines which are more like a, a merlot or a shiraz 
What about yourself? Oh, me? I, I, I'm not particular to any, any kind. Um, I've been finding that I like the, uh, the sweeter wines, the sweeter grapes even, even in the blushes and stuff lately. So I've been going more toward a blush. Yeah. We went to an amazing vineyard in, in Australia. Um, that was beautiful. I've been trying to get my partner to go wine tasting for years. Um, but yeah, we ended up in, in Australia. That was lovely. Yeah. I can't wait to see it again. <laughs> we need the airports to open. Yeah, <laughs> we should start a wine tour, just an all around yeah. wine tour, with wine and music. Oh my god, yeah, in our own yeah. countries, but like stream it. Yes, that'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be cool. Okay. That'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> How drunk can you get on one uh, yeah. one call? <laughs> Still trying to. Uh, z- 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 yeah, yeah. So why were we? Oh, you like you? <laughs> yeah, I love all of you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be it. That would be so. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> that's gonna be our next our next idea for next year yeah yes. we'll get oh we can do it so. <laughs> um left or right-handed right favorite animal dog favorite color blue if you talk to anyone dead or alive who would it be and what would you want to talk about Oh. It's that question, get you over. That's a big one. That's tough. Oh, there's so many people. Okay, I'll let you pick two. Okay. <laughs> so, um, God. This is really hard. <laughs> it, it can be, yes. Yes. <laughs> Because it's a very thought-provoking question. But there's there's just so many people that I'd love to talk to. Like, so many. I, I agree. Um, I mean, my top pick would probably be Dolly Parton. Although I'm pretty sure that if I ever met her or had to interview her, I'd be like, uh, yeah, no, you're going to need to get cue cards because I'm... No, yeah, that's it. Just yeah, it just, you know. Just, <laughs> um, I guess it would be... Um, oh, what's her name? Uh... God, my mom's favourite singer, and I want to do a cover of her song. She's passed away. Um, she was gay around in the 60s. Uh, you're not going to say Leslie Gore, are you? No. Okay, good. Because I'm like, that's the only person I can think of from the 60s. No. Um... <laughs> oh, God, this is annoying. God. Okay, so we're gonna play guest artist <laughs> now. Yeah, come back, come back to that. Come back. Okay. So what's one, one okay. of your hobbies? Oh, I make pallet furniture. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I've, I've I've got a table in there that I make. I've made our bed, um, headboards. I do bath panels. Um, oh wow! Cabinets. Awesome. We're gonna start another side business for you. Yeah, no, it was. in the first lockdown, like it was, that's all I was doing. Like everyone was ordering stuff. Um, I couldn't make it quick enough. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> if you were a musical, what musical would you be? Oh, um, Kinky Boots. <laughs> that is so cool. That's a different answer. I don't think we've ever had that one. So that's really cool. <laughs> Kinky Boots definitely is such a good musical. I like that answer. Um, yeah. If you're a mythical creature, what creature would you be? Oh, a unicorn. Ooh. If you're a Disney character, <laughs> what character would you be? Oh, uh, probably Donald or Daffy. Like, I'm mischievous, so it'd be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah. Yeah, Donald <laughs> or Daffy or Roadrunner. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so <laughs> you know, I guess I have a story. We were in New Mexico and there's actual roadrunners, right? So obviously what? you see the cartoon and you're expecting this big bird and no, it's like the size of a little robin or whatever. And I'm like oh. and, and the best part oh. is it runs across the road I'm like, hey look there 
uh, I couldn't even tell you there was a road runner. That's not fast. Ah. But really, you know, it was just funny. It was because it was like this little tiny bird. I'm like, you're expecting at least, you know, like a medium sized yeah. bird. No, mm -mm. no. And then a big, massive rock to drop on him. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for a <laughs> no rock in the middle of the desert. But yes, I was waiting. So. Oh, man. It's the coyote, isn't it? Yeah. There was no coyote. I could have got the chihuahua oh. out to chase it. It looked like a yeah, coyote. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll have to go the next time you're in Mexico or somewhere out west. Yeah. What's one of your great TikTok videos? Yeah, I will do a TikTok video, yeah, I promise. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> so I'm sorry. What's one of your favorite snacks? Ooh. One of my favorite snacks. Oh, it's got to be Haribo um, bears. <gasps> yes, a bit yeah. of but okay. see what I do. Rocks. Yeah, because I don't like them soft, so I buy the packet, open it, and just leave them until they all go hard. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Put them in the fridge. That'll make them hard. <gasps> yes. <laughs> there you go. Put them in the fridge. You can eat them quicker then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I shall do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> What's mm. one song you've been listening to a lot lately that you would give a recommendation for everyone to listen to? My own song? <laughs> Go for it! <laughs> Fall Apart With Me <laughs> by Magpie. Yeah, so uh, I released my uh, second uh, solo single um, last 26th of February. Um, it's called Fall Apart With Me and my st my artist name is magpie um and it's about looking at your inner self and your demons and all your crap that comes with it and being okay with it you know and saying you're in a safe place it's okay like we can we can do this so yeah the video is on youtube That's you perfect. can go check it out if you haven't already okay. checked out everyone go check it out yes so do you um, want to circle back and to that? the last question. Wait, wait, wait. Do you want to circle back to that question? Oh, yeah. Alive or dead? Anyone you want to talk to? Oh, yeah. yeah. Or is this going to be one of those where you're just going to come tell us later? Um, oh God, I'll just, I'll, I'll have to, maybe Jesus or God, if, if he's a being or if she's a being, um, just to figure out actually how the world started. Um, like and yeah um but i i don't i think you know we're eternal i think we're energy and it's it it doesn't start or finish yes. um so i think we're bigger than that <laughs> you know that's what i believe in the universe mm -hmm. um but it's oh, what is her name i keep going to say katie lang and it's not um i'm gonna have to tell you another time but i guess the other person would probably probably be someone like um michael jackson um, we're gonna probably make you sing one of her songs that because you can't think of her name yeah i can't even think of the song this is the thing like I, i'm in music and i i'm so bad with artist names and um <laughs> it's okay it's okay we'll make you do it i'm just teasing oh but I it's love quite a few music. Of Dee's calling on the phone no it's not that that's someone else <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to name that tune everyone no. yeah 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 Don't, I, do, I do a thing called name that tune where I sing 90s R&B songs but I just do the verse and then I make everyone I, it's called name that tune I love it I do it on my Facebook um, but I, I will find it and I will oh, yes, she really, she's she's huge. Huge. Okay. when I when I, 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 I know we're going to say goodbye and I'm going to be like ah <laughs> <laughs> it's her. Yeah. It's always the way, isn't it? It is. Okay. The last question. Who is your favourite CWC host? Oh my god, that is so out of order. <laughs> That's so unfair. <laughs> I'm not choosing. <laughs> I'll ask, I'll, do you know what? Let me ask my friend. Oh, she's fallen. Oh, I can't get up now. Oh, we can going to do it now. Celine. Oh, Celine Dion, there you go. Yeah. Who, who, who do you prefer? 
<laughs> you said you're both amazing and uh, how can you choose there you go that's that's from Celine. that, that was Celine has spoken thank you Celine. <laughs> all right her word is is, is it that's her it, word is bond had, had i known she would be here earlier i requested her to sing something in french because yeah that just yeah she's amazing right yes yeah, she's she's, so, she's always she's always in the background. She comes on holiday with us and everything. <laughs> she's probably just wanting to get a picture of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That reminds me of like the whole American kid book. They were doing like the flat Stanley book. You know where they? Yeah, have, yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So oh amazing. man, I can't believe you asked that question. That's so unfair. <laughs> I, I love it. The, no, the number of people that either go to answer and they're like, what? Yeah, you're like, like, what? What are you saying? Whatever. <laughs> we, we've had some bands and they've had major discussions about, you pick one, I'll pick the other. And then they're like, ah. the other one was like me. It's like, no, we don't pick anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then Tigger was sticking for a while. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. So we always joke that Tigger more has the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I choose Tigger then. <laughs> Tigger's the best host. We yeah. just do the oh, humans. It's weird now. Oh. Wait, I'm trying to sleep. Don't bother me. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. That's so cool. So tell us, what ha what does 2021 look like for you at the moment? Obviously with the Ooh. madness. So um, 2021 uh, is... It's already been so busy. The campaign is doing really well. Um, I'm hoping to start workshops for young women um, towards the end of the year. Um, I'm going to be doing a production course on on Skillshare for um, for songwriters, actually. Um, but it's coming from a position of um, someone that doesn't play any instruments because I do everything by ear. So I don't play, mm. I don't play anything uh, other than sing. Um, so that's really exciting. I've had quite a few people approach me to do um, courses for young people, which is brilliant. So I'm going to be working with a lot of people um, with communities, which is another thing that's very close to my heart. And, and just really continuing my work with women. Um, I spoke to a record label earlier on today um, about potentially doing stuff with them, um, like female songwriting and production camps, uh, LGBTQ plus and, and black uh, women as well. So three different ones, uh, women only, women of color and yeah, LGBTQ plus. Um, because I want to create a safe space. So although I don't want to exclude anyone, I still think it's important uh, when you're doing stuff with people that they feel safe and are around people that they can relate to until they get their confidence. And then, yeah. you know, so my aim is to, to try to work with people and just get the percentages up in songwriting and, and production um, and yeah. just keep working tirelessly. And, and collaborating, you know, releasing more music as an artist and putting myself on the line. <laughs> Keep doing the amazing job you've already been doing. Let's just say Thank that. You. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It'd be great to so. collaborate one day as well. She's a writer. I, I just sit and watch. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I just sit and watch. I had the camera. Or we can zoom. Yeah, I'm always up for collaborating. Yes, we'll do it. Uh, that'd be Perfect. That'd be okay, but I should warn you, I'm not allowed to sing. It, okay. It's like There's like oh, a yeah. statue somewhere that says I'm not allowed to sing, you know. All right, I'll sing. Okay, <laughs> good. <I'll sing>. Okay. <laughs> be good. We can just write and then I'll sing it. Okay, perfect. Yeah? Do that. We will definitely yeah. schedule that. Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Sure. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us about all the amazing things you're doing for, for women and the music industry and everything. It's been an absolute Perfect. pleasure. I've had so much fun. It's so lovely to actually meet you guys in person. You know, you're amazing women. And, you know, it's just this is what I love, you know, the human aspect of this. 
you know, meeting people for the first time, having great conversations um, and really connecting. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you well, so much. You're for welcome back. Yes. Welcome back anytime. Yes. Yeah, any time you want me, just give me a call. Perfect. Okay, great. We can be <laughs> <a> third <laughs> host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm more than welcome. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.